How's it going everyone? This is Boots with Snapkeep Arcade, back with another new player's guide to the multiverse. This week we'll be talking about one of Magic's most mysterious and infamous planeswalkers, Ugin. Ugin is an elder dragon planeswalker from Dominaria, aligned with colorless mana, able to transmute raw, etheric energy into matter and spells, such as the so-called Breath of Ugin, an invisible flame. Ugin was spawned from the Ur Dragon, alongside his twin, Nickel. Where in every other egg there was only one, they woke together. They named themselves together, and touched the soil of Dominaria at the same instant. They were both only half the size of their siblings. When they witnessed their sister Marevia Sal being attacked by non-specific humanoids and their hounds, Nickel tried to rescue and then avenge her while Ugin was far more pressed to find their other siblings and seek more knowledge. Upon climbing a mountain, Ugin expressed wonder at the multiverse, while Nickel sought to become strong so as to not die like their fallen sister. After Palladia Moors mocked their size and their hunting techniques, the twins spent years perfecting various techniques for hunting in tandem. The next years, they lived with Arcades Sabbath, who had taken up residence as Dragon Lord in a human settlement. Here, Nickel learned about the nature of humans and how easy they could be manipulated to further his own goals. Meanwhile, Ugin made particular friends with an old holy elder named Teju Kin, whose sole purpose in life was to think about things that could not be seen. He soaked up the calm wisdom she exuded and learned about the existence of other planes. After several years, Bolas had learned enough and took Ugin to seek revenge for their sister's murder. On their way to the Birth Mountain, Ugin was wounded and poisoned by humans that had evolved into dragon hunters. After recovering, Ugin witnessed Bolas manipulating the dragon hunters into a quarrel between several factions and taking over as supreme leader. After Bolas tried to use his brother for his own ends, Ugin realized that Bolas had never truly cared for him at all. This mental shock caused his planeswalker spark to ignite, and he planeswalked to the meditation plane. While the rest of the Elder Dragons clashed in the Elder Dragon War, Ugin instead explored the multiverse, marveling at its grandeur. When he at last chose to return home, he found his world embroiled in war. With Arcades Sabbath and Nicol Bola sending their armies of dragons and humans against each other, seeking to convince them to stop fighting, Ugin revealed himself. Nicol, who had believed that his twin had been killed by the humans after he had taken control of him, mistrusted Ugin at first, but was convinced that he was the real Ugin. Nickel proudly displayed his empire before him, asking his brother to join him in being emperor of all. Ugin retorted that all that Nickel had achieved was a minor speck in an infinity of worlds and nothing to be proud of, revealing that he had found a way to travel between worlds. Nickel angrily asked Ugin to show him how to planeswalk, and when he could not, suspected that he had been in hiding somewhere on Dominaria and plotted against him. The brothers exchanged bitter words before Ugin left Dominaria again, cementing the rift that had grown between them. Ugin was the mastermind of the trio of planeswalkers, including Soren Markov and Nahiri, that lured the Eldrazi to Zendikar to imprison them within the Eye of Ugin. Over the course of 40 years, the planeswalkers prepared Ugin's plans, creating a massive network of stones known as Hedrons, powered by ley lines and coated by draconic runes. When the Eldrazi finally arrived on Zendikar, Ugin's part was to combat the Eldrazi with his own colorless magic, the magical key to unlocking the eye. Thousands of years after the Eldrazi were sealed, Ugin and fellow planeswalker Azor devised a plan to trap Bolas on Ixalan. Before it could come to that, Bolas tracked his twin to Tarkir. The two planeswalkers waged a titanic battle, leaving Ugin nearly dead. Bolas dug deep into Ugin's mind for information about the Eldrazi in their prison. His purpose accomplished, Bolas departed, leaving the grievously wounded Ugin to die. In the original timeline, although physically dead, the dragon spirit had not departed and found its way into the mind of the planeswalker Sarkon Vol. Sarkon was plazed by Ugin's whispers in his head, 1,280 years after the dragon's death. Sarkon later discovered that the whispers were Ugin's psychic plea across time and space for help. 
Sarkon Vol was drawn back to his home plane of Tarkir by the whisperings of Ugin's spirit in his head. While there, he was able to travel back in time 1,280 years using Ugin's Nexus, a spiritual nexus surrounding Ugin's bones. The Nexus transported Sargon back in time, just before the battle between Ugin and Nicol Bolas. Using a shard of a hedron containing Ugin's life force, Sargon created the Crucible of the Spirit Dragon to save Ugin and thereby alter the fate of the entire plane. Sargon was transported back to the future, and the timeline of Tarkir was forever changed. 1,280 years after Sarkon Vol saved Ugin, the spirit dragon still rested in his cocoon of hedrons. During that time, Tarkir's history changed, and Ugin's dragons had now become the dominant species on the plane. Soren Markov arrived on Tarkir, and with the help of the enthralled Atarka warrior, made his way to Ugin's resting place. There, Soren awakened and freed the spirit dragon from his slumber. Ugin explained about his battle with Nicol Bolas to Soren, who then informed him about the awakening of the Eldrazi. A shocked Ugin inquired about Nahiri, stating that they would need her help to fight the Eldrazi again by rebuilding the Hedron network. Ugin soon realized that Soren was purposely hiding the information about Nahiri's fate and was annoyed. He warned Soren to put aside whatever spat the vampire and Nahiri had and to find her. He then thanked Soren for his assistance with a warning that they will meet again on Zendikar, and Nahiri had better be with the vampire. Later, Ugin met Sarkon Vol, who had arrived searching for answers. The spirit dragon had been studying Tarkir's new history in the various carvings around the canyon. He eventually questioned Sarkon on his actions and how a hedron from the Eye of Ugin arrived on Tarkir. Sarkon informed Ugin of the events in the past few years, deducing his actions in the past. As Ugin had no memory of the alternate timeline and the role his spiritual echo had played in it, he theorized that Sarkon had now created a time paradox. The Dragon Man had appeared from nowhere and had saved Ugin the Spirit Dragon before disappearing a thousand years later. Understanding this, Sarkon made his peace with Ugin and left. Having been freed from stasis on Tarkir, Ugin returned to Zendikar. With Soren Markov and Nahiri missing, he started to rebuild the Eye of Ugin and the Hedron Network. When Jace Beleren arrived to investigate, the Spirit Dragon revealed how the network might be used to again immobilize the Eldrazi Titans, but Jace suspected that the same trick might instead serve as a first step in killing them. Ignoring Ugin's dire warnings, Jace left the Eye and made his way back to Seagate to pass the information on to Gideon. After the newly formed Gatewatch destroyed Ulamog and Kozilek, Ugin berated them for killing the ancient creatures instead of trapping them, fearing the dire consequences for the multiverse. Last we saw Ugin, he remained on Zendikar to investigate the consequences of killing the Eldrazi Titans. If you like this video, please subscribe to Snapkeep Arcade and hit that bell icon to get notified whenever I upload a new video. This has been Boots with Snapkeep Arcade. Thanks for watching.